I was kind of bummed out. I was like, what the fuck, man? I'm, I mean, I've been doing all this stuff for his company. And they just like, they texted me. And it wasn't text from Scott Coker or a, a matchmakers. How's everything going today, man? Good, good, brother. Just uh, got back from the gym. I was uh, in there just working out, just not back home. Hey man, look, and speaking of that stuff, right? The gym, working out, all that. Like, I, I see you on Instagram. You look like you're in great shape, man. How, like, how do you feel now physically at this stage in the game? Because you look physically, you look great. I feel great, my brother. I, I feel great. I mean, uh, even though my last fight was in uh, September of uh, last year, I uh, I stay in shape throughout the whole year all the time. I mean, uh, I I watch what I eat. I'm, I'm pretty disciplined, so I have no problem with that. I've always been like that since... Uh, since I was a young kid, so uh, so yeah, and then w with the gym, it's it's uh, I guess another pressure because I gotta show those kids an example. You know, I don't want to be one of those coaches with a big belly, uh, walking around. So uh, I I train with them all. I push them to their limits. So uh, yeah, I always try to stay in shape. For sure, man. And you got a lot of experience in the sport, right? You know, you fought some of the very best. Last time we saw you in an action, right? It was, uh, I think it was in September, right? Have you had any chance to sort of look back at the fight, digest it, get any thoughts on it? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, uh, I look back on it. I'm uh, pretty disappointed. I fought the way I fought, but uh, you know, I like to keep the fight standing. Uh, I, I should have uh, depended more on my jujitsu. I'm a, you know, I'm a good uh, black belt, but uh. I like to keep it standing, keep it exciting for all the fans in Ireland. I mean, they like stand-up fights. Uh, but, uh, yeah, pr pretty much after uh, Kane clipped me with the left hook and dropped me, I, I went straight to autopilot the next round because I was just, like, trying to still see what's going on. But, uh, you know, I had a pre you could say I had a pretty bad concussion. <laughs> so that's why I went autopilot. But, uh, yeah, looking back at it, I mean, I had, like, I had fun in there, you know. So it was for good sure. times. Yeah, and the, and the reason I asked about the last time we saw you is because I'm curious to to get your thoughts on if you know we could. Are you expect? Are we expecting to see you in there back in there anytime soon, man? Any fan, any long time fans, like for anyone that wants to see you fight, like can we expect you back in action maybe this year again? Uh, I I might get back in action. I'm 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 pursuing a different career, and, I, and, I, and I'm not gonna talk about it until I'm done done okay. with it. But uh, uh, now with Bellator, after I fight, Bellator cut me. So uh. I had some offers from Russia, from different promotions. Uh, it was good payday, but uh, I, I'm kind of scared to go to Russia right now. <laughs> I might not, I might go there and never come back, or then I might let me come back. But uh, we're still looking into something maybe in March. Uh, that's still in the air, but uh, yeah, we'll see. Right As of right now, I'm a free agent. Uh, I was trying to test the skills with uh, Bare Knuckle. I just saw them signing Daniel Strauss. And I know Daniel Strauss used to fight in Bellator. And uh, there's several times where I told Dave, David, uh, uh, the owner of Bernardo, that I would like to uh, maybe fight Luis Palomino. That would be a good matchup because uh, he was a World Series of Fighting back when I was a champion of World Series of Fighting. So, uh, you know, there's options. I, I wouldn't mind fighting Daniel Strauss, but uh, but we'll see. You know, if the because Bernardo is no joke, man. I mean, like a few punches. It could change your whole face for the rest of your life. Yeah. So, uh, but it fits my style. Even though I come from a jiu-jitsu background, I like to keep it standing. I have power with my hands. So, uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah, I mean, and you definitely have, you know, you have the boxing debut, right? I think you're one to know as a boxer. So I think that'd be fun. But it's safe to say that as of right now, there's no, like, set thing you're looking to do, right? Nothing's confirmed. You're still sort of weighing what you want to do, right? That's that's fair to say. Exactly, yeah. Right, right now, my main focus is just on the gym, teaching uh being in shape just in case that phone call comes in but uh right now there's nothing set uh as far as fight wise nothing and speaking of the training man i see that you're at uh you know you got your own gym right um he talked to me about sort of how that whole thing got started you know when did that get started and for someone that you know would like to enter the gym things of that nature like what kind of stuff do you guys offer there like what's what's unique about you guys would you say yeah i mean uh well, unique is just man. We we, uh, we train pretty hard, <laughs> even from kids' classes. I, I push them pretty hard, uh, physically, mentally. Uh, but yeah, like I uh, just the main thing I demand from these kids is just being there. Right now, there's so many 
so many th things that get them off track, like the iPads, the video games, the this, the that. So I'm very strict on them. Like as soon as they step on the mats, just them being there. And if they're not there, I'll yell out loud, no one is home, nobody's home. Because, you know, we have that saying in MMA, like when the lights turn on and if you don't perform the way you perform in the gym, we say you're not home. So uh, I'm really big on them. I'm telling them, like, you're not here. You got to wake up. You got to wake up. So just always being there, uh, teaching them about breathing at the young age because it's important for these kids to learn how to breathe because uh, some of the kids that come to the class, they breathe through their mouth. Their mouth is wide open. So just mainly in through your nose, out through your mouth. Uh, you know, just the little stuff like with the speed ladder drills, eye coordination, it's not just a martial arts gym. I just want them to be athletic overall. So I, I know some of them are not going to be black belts. They're not going to be professional fighters, but uh, I have the opportunity to uh, push them differently that then, you know, they don't even push them like that in a PE class in, the, in, in high schools or in school. So I push them differently. And, uh, and of course, respect, discipline. It's, it's very big for me. Yeah. hundred percent, man. It seems like you, um, uh... You want to apply some of those old school traditions to the kids, right? No phones, work hard, things like that. I, I could definitely respect that, man. As far as your kids, right? I could see from your Instagram posting your kids in the jujitsu. How special is it, man, for you to see, you know, your kids doing something you have a passion for? It must be nice to see, I would think, right? Yeah, yeah. It's 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 uh, my youngest. My my son is still adapting to it. <laughs> but two of my daughters are, uh, uh, you know, they've been training now. I think over four years so wow. it's it's great to see them uh train compete uh uh like again they're learning discipline that they're, they're learning a lot of stuff and and i think jujitsu could help them far in life because uh, you know they're females you, you know what they could run into i'm not always going to be there a dad so but what i could do is just pass on pass on a lot of my knowledge to them and and uh yeah i mean i feel great because i get to spend another two hours with them in a day. So it's, it's, it's good times. For sure. And was it sort of something they wanted to do on their own? Was it something that, you know, you felt would be nice for them to sort of at least experience and try for themselves? Or was it sort of a bit of both? I'm curious about this. Yeah. Yeah. So, th I mean, they're playing soccer. They were doing soccer and, and then like uh, you. Yeah. Yeah. They played soccer a little bit and they were like, I mean, they're loving it, but they're, they're, they're okay with this. So, uh, when they saw me open up the gym, uh, they were really, uh, you know, they were already training with long, long time training partner Stephen Martinez. He he owns this jujitsu school here in uh, Corona called Peerless Jujitsu. Dude, the open mats on Sundays is one of the best open mats there. So they were already training there. So <clears throat> when I opened up my gym, it was a smooth transact transaction to to my to my school. So uh, it was nothing for forced them to do it, but I mean. We only, uh, the kids classes are Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So those three days, uh, they push pretty hard because two, Thursday, Friday, they're off. And uh, yeah, it was nothing to force on them to do it. But uh, yeah, I mean, they push me every day now. When is the next tournament? When's the next tournament? They want to compete. So it's good. Yeah, man. And speaking of the soccer, I was, it's something I meant to ask you, someone who's, you know, I watch soccer myself. I'm, I'm a fan. Um, You were a soccer player, right? And I, you know, I read a little bit about that. Where was it that you played? And, and you know, how long did you play? How long did your career sort of last? Yeah, so I started playing in Russia. Right. I started playing there. I played for local team. Uh, and then I moved to another team called Spartak, Spartak Moscow. I played there. And then I moved uh, to the States and I was playing for a, a, a ODP, Olympic Devel Development Program. And then I played also under 14 uh, national team. Uh, that's when back Freddie Adu was playing for the USA national team. And um, I played for a San Diego club called Nomads. Nomads is, is pretty high club up there. So, uh, and then from there, I played for uh, San Diego soccer. So it was an indoor team. Uh, uh, I forgot the league name, but there was an indoor team. Uh, Brian Quinn was the, the head coach. And then from there, I moved to Riverside. And um, they were telling me there's tryouts in Mexico for a, a Mexico team called Morelia Monarcas. It's a Premier League team. So I went there. I uh, dropped out of, uh, you know, dropped out of high school. I was behind on my credit score. So uh, I went to Morelia. I uh, made it to the team, but uh, the way they were trying to sign me 
with the paperwork and they didn't want to pay special fees to FIFA. They wanted to change my whole nationality to like a Uruguayan nationality. So, wow. so yeah, I go back home and I was talking to my dad. I was like, yeah, I made a team, but they're trying to keep me. So, uh, but they want to change my nationality. And they're like, no, no, you can't do that. So I left that behind. I came home and, uh, you know, it's kind of like, I was still playing soccer. Like if some teams in LA, they would pay me $400, $300 per game to just go play with them. But it was nothing like a professional. So, you know, that's when I stopped and I kind of like went to college, started working construction, and then I got into jiu-jitsu. Yeah, what what position did you play? Center midfield. And okay. behind forwards. Like I would always be behind forwards just trying to – I was running a lot, doing all kinds of screaming, talking, yelling. So, yeah. Was there anything you learned from soccer as, you know, in your preparations as a soccer player? Was there anything that sort of translated over into MMA? I mean, maybe it could be nothing. And then this is – but was there anything at all? Yeah, the kicks. I think the kicks, the explosiveness. Uh, Especially uh, kicks now in MMA, right, with how much they've evolved. I'm sure that had to yeah. yeah, you know, the low kicks, you know, I'm obviously talking about the kicks. First thing comes to my mind is Jose Aldo. He had a great kicks. And, oh, yeah. And he also played soccer, too. So the kicks. And then I think from just training in Russia, uh, the mental aspect, because the coaches over there, they don't care uh, if it's, negative 10 outside if it's snowing uh we would just be there running three four five six miles and uh crazy you know just going into uh because even a young age they send you to camps there so i would go to camps and i would stay away from my family for like months and i would just be training and it was pretty rough uh and that's the one thing i learned you know and uh which is transition to mma MMA training is good, but it gets really hard when you focus on wrestling. And, uh, man, wrestling is the hardest part. And I think just knowing that mental strength I learned at the young age in Russia helped me with, with wrestling. Because, I mean, in MMA, if you don't have wrestling, then you're pretty much done. You shouldn't even fight. That's crazy, man. I didn't even know that it got that intense, the training in Russia for that. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, so that's yeah, crazy. they push you pretty, pretty intense. It's crazy. And speaking of Russia, right, um, I know that you were born in Russia, but your parents are Armenian, if I'm not mistaken. That's so how, how did that come about? Like your family moved over to Russia some years back, I guess, before you were born. Is that is that how it came about? Yeah. Yeah. They moved to uh, Russia and, uh, you know, I just all my pretty much all my childhood is from Russia, just Mo Moscow, wow. Russia. And uh, yeah, that's when I met each other. But yeah. Uh, my my dad played a little bit of soccer, but he got into sambo and karate stuff like that. So he started yeah. teaching people stuff. But uh, yeah, most of my childhood is in in Russia. And I was I was gonna ask you about that. I read somewhere that your father was kind of like a a sambo expert, if you will, right? Um, and I'm curious because it's not something that I see too much of or know many people that have a background or a knowledge in that. Was he able to ever teach any of that stuff to you? He did. He did. He taught me uh, some of that stuff to me. Uh, it wasn't too much, too many leg locks. I don't remember any leg locks, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, mainly like karate, karate. He taught me that, but, but to be honest with you, I, I did not like karate. I was just like, Oh man, this, I had some fights when I was a little kid, but it was a point fighting, you know, so you touch the head, they gave you a point, but, uh, um, that's why I kind of chose soccer because it was more, it would fit me more. I was just running there. Just, I was a kid with a lot of energy. So, uh, but with, uh, with karate, I didn't, I didn't enjoy it that much. <laughs> For sure. And listen, man, it was nice to sort of, you know, be able to catch up with you here. Um, so as far as, you know, the whole competition, all I just wanted to clarify, you may be interested in competing in March, maybe not sometime this year, but right now you're sort of focusing on, you know, sort of getting the mind together, focusing on the training, on the kids, right? Yeah, yeah, you know, just, uh, uh, I guess looking back at the last fight, I kind of got disappointed the way like uh, Bellator let me go because uh, if you look at my record in Bellator, which is not that good, but I've taken a lot of tough fights and uh, I have actually stepped up for them like in last minutes, like, uh, like I beat Kiefer Crosby, uh, like a month later, they call me, they're like, Hey, you want to take this fight against Sal Rogers, uh, 10 day notice. And I was like, yeah, let's, let's do it. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let, let's, if you, if you need me, I'm a, I'm a company man. Uh, let's do it. 
But I mean, I knew Saul was a good wrestler. Uh, he had a full camp training for a fight, which I mean, I still get ready, but it's good to know like nine weeks before who you're fighting because you mentally prepare for that person. And don't get me wrong, so sometimes it's good too to just come in short notice and knock someone out and just get out of there. But uh, I felt like I did a lot of stuff for the company and um, I was keeping a great relationship with them. And even before my last fight against Kane Musa, I was having like a, you know, like a nice dinner with the boss, Scott Coker, and I was just picking his brain and, uh, you know, talking to Scott so many times, I, I know he doesn't like people that use takedowns, hold on, um, almost like the uh, Storley fight, Storley versus MVP fight, where he was just doing a lot of his wrestling to beat him. So uh, he likes exciting fights. So, you know, I was just asking the boss, I was like, hey, do you like the way I'm performing? Like, I'm going to keep it standing. He's like, no, keep doing what you got to do. And I, I didn't get any sense of him being like, hey, yeah, like, you lose this fight, we're going to fucking cut you. If 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 I knew that, i will be like, you know what, I'm going to take Kane on the ground. I'm going to fucking tap him. I'm going to take him to the ground and submit him. And, you know, looking back at my whole career, I've never been submitted. You know, I'm, I never... I have a lot of wins by submission, but I've never been submitted. I mean, I've been knocked out. I've been TKO'd, a lot of decision losses, but never been submitted. So it kind of put a bad taste in my mouth because uh, uh, they didn't call me. <laughs> they didn't, uh, like, they just sent me a text message. Hey, uh, we're going to cut you. I was just like, what the fuck? And I still had two more fights left under my contract. So they said, no, we're uh, we're paying you too much. That's what they're saying. They're paying me too much. But uh, I haven't even reached the peak of the pay in what I was supposed to make. And I actually took a pay cut my last fight to take that fight. So uh, I was just like, I was kind of bummed out. I was like, what the fuck, man? I'm, I mean, I've been doing all this stuff for his company. And they just like, they texted me. And it wasn't text from Scott Coker or a, a matchmaker's. Uh, it was just a text from some of the, uh, I'm not going to mention the name. I'm not going to put them on the bus, but yeah, I got the text. So uh, I called the matchmaker. I'm like, Hey, what's going on? Is this serious? And they're like, yeah, let me find out. And then I got a text from him. I was like, yeah, uh, you cost us a lot of money. We can't do that. And and believe me, if I was making really good amount of money, I, I'm, a, I'm a man of my word. I'll tell you, yeah, I was making great money. But uh, yeah, I mean, they made up some bullshit that they're under budget. Uh, they need to save money where after two weeks, they sign all these crazy fighters. <laughs> so to me, it's like, man, I've been doing this sport for so long that like, I know how uh, promotion works. So yeah, that's why I'm like, right now, I'm just like, kind of saying, fuck this whole MMA game. But I'm also like, I'm happy. <clears throat> what it did for me you know i have my gym so right now i'm like i'm i'm just training um training full time i have no days off i'm training i'm training every day like a camp so uh if something comes up uh and and they did come up in russia good offers very, very good pay in to fight in russia to have rematch with that fucking guy that hit me in the face uh, that was fighting acb but again i don't want to risk going to Russia because it's 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 crazy right now in Russia, especially Russia, USA. They open up my passport, US passport. They'll give me more hard time over there, the customs. So I'm like, I'd rather stay in the United States. So anything comes up, like I said, any bare knuckle offers, uh, other offers. Uh, I was thinking UFC, if there's like last minute, uh, I will step in. But uh, as of right now, I'm just focusing on the gym and just training. So if things didn't go the way they did with Bellator, let's say you still had another fight on the deal and you were going to compete. I mean, let's say that you weren't uh, released from Bellator. Let's say you still had that fight on the table, right? Would you still be focusing fully on the gym or would you still be in the mode of MMA fighter, you know, sort of full time, I guess? Yeah, absolutely. Like to me, it's like, no, I, I'd be like, no, I have another fight left. Actually, two fights left. Uh, two, I would okay. just focus on that. Yeah, I would focus on that because there's a bunch of names, especially at 55 that uh match up pretty good with me and and i would just make the best out of it but uh it it just sucked because you could like i i kind of like told him hey i, I know i have two fights left i want to fight one more and then give me like a maybe like a retirement fight 
and I know they're coming to Pechanga March 31st. So, uh, you know, that would make sense if I fought again and then I fight one more time and then I would retire. But, uh, but yeah, so right now, I'm not going to say I'm retired <laughs> because I am uh, training. I'm, uh, you know, I still keep up with anybody. Like, I, I won one day some some black belt to walk into my gym and try to challenge me. That's what I tell the kids all the time. <laughs> so that's what what's how good of a shape I'm in. So uh, as of now, I'm just uh, waiting. You know, I'm a, I'm a free agent, so uh, I'm gonna wait to see what happens. But uh, main focus focus on a gym, build up the gym as much as I can, give my knowledge to anyone that's willing to learn, and anyone that's serious because a lot lot of a lot of kids these days that are coming up uh it's different now it's it's like dude you have two jobs you got to keep your social media active and you got to train so this promoters wants two things from you like you want to have they want you to have followers they want you to uh, uh put instagram posts up so any upcoming fighter that comes to me i'm I'm teaching them that side i'm like hey they want this also from you make some videos take some pictures of you doing whatever if you're doing but uh promote yourself because at the end of the day you don't only want to get to promote yourself i think even if you were to fight with bellator right it seems to me as if regardless of what would happen whether you're fighting or not it seems like the door of coaching and your gym is opening more and the door of you being a fighter is closing more right regardless so even if you did sign with bellator you said that maybe a couple fights down you could have had a retirement fight so even if you do fight mma right safe to say maybe a couple more right like you can see the retirement in the distance right uh, it's it's crazy to tell you because I was I was talking to Yoel Yoel Romero because he fought on the last card okay. and I'm a big fan of Yoel and uh, uh, he was we we're talking about age and <laughs> he was telling me that he started he started fighting when he was 36. That guy's just a freak. Crazy. And wh- when I look at him, I'm like, man, I'm I because he's like now I think 44 maybe 45. I'm not mistaken. I, I don't know this age, but right, it's got to be. I up was there. telling him, I was like, man, I want to beat your number. Like I want to beat your number, and we we're just laughing. We we're going back and forth, but uh, yeah, I heard you say that before in an interview with somebody. I think yeah, that's why yeah, I was curious I, about the fighting stuff. Yeah, like to me, like I have, I suffered one serious injury, which was 2015. That's when I was supposed to fight for a Bellator belt against Patricio, and I, that was an ACL injury back when yeah. I was helping Frankie Edgar. Frankie was fighting uh, Uriah Faber, so I was there in uh, New Jersey just helping him, and we we're training and just. A freak accident i just injured my knee but but no man I'm, i mean i uh i watch my diet i'm on i'm on a strict carnivore diet all i eat is meat uh i don't drink i don't do drugs um uh, back in 2018 2017 i was yeah i was smoking weed i was trying to be like the ds brothers but it's not for <laughs> me uh, i'm a very uh i'm a person that likes to go you know i just i don't like things slowing me down or control me so I don't do no alcohol. I mean, I don't drink any. I don't go out. I have three kids. So my main thing is just to train like a maniac and just be in a crazy shape. So so I don't know. Don't be surprised if you see me fighting or coming back to fighting when I'm 40. or <laughs> Because, I mean, I have a lot of fights. I have over 47 professional fights. So I have zero injuries. I mean, I, uh, I wake up without any bruises. I mean, uh, I do my ice baths on a daily. I mean... Uh, to me, train is like a lifestyle. So if I had like serious injuries where I'm limping, my neck is hurting, my back is fucked up, I'd be like, you know what, bro? I do see that door closing, which again, with the age, the timing and all that slows down. But I mean, look at your Romero. He's a fucking beast. And then uh, I I spar at the gym, you know, I spar and I, I test myself with some, some highly level guys. We have like mm-hmm. Jalen show up to the gym, Jalen Turner. And I and he's a beast, like man. Is, yeah, one fifty five that you guys should look out after is him. He's gonna make some waves. This he's got a big fight coming up too. I think. Yeah, that, against, against like Hooker. a rank guy, right? He's fighting Dan Hooker. Oh, that's a big fight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, I he already beat his training partner Brad Riddle. So uh, I mean, I think it's gonna be not a great highlight reel for him. But I uh, I test myself in the gym. I'm like, okay, let me go with this young up and comer. Yeah. And then my speed outmatches their speed. And then there's a division one wrestler that shows up to the gym. I'm like, okay, let me wrestle with this division one wrestler, see where I stand. And I keep up with them. And I feel like if I stop keeping up with them, 
then you're not going to hear me talk like this. I'm not going to be like, yeah, I'm not going to pass URL's age, but I have zero injuries. Uh, I'm going to keep going. And, uh, and yeah, but I'm, I'm also honest with myself. So if, if, I'm not good at something. I'm going to say, yeah, man, I'm, it's time to hang the gloves. Awesome, man. I think that's a great uh, way we could leave this, man. I think that's a good wrapping point. Um, thanks for sharing with us, man. Thanks for giving us an insight as to where you are now. Um, like you said, man, you're still in good shape. You look like it. Um, still training like a fighter. Again, the measuring stick is sparring these guys, and you feel like you could still get in there. So, you know, maybe in the future we see you in there. As of right now, um, we'll enjoy seeing you progress with the gym and you know just family and all that so we wish you the best of luck with that thanks for coming on the show man and just take care thank you my brother you too man